Hey guys, Children of Morta just released yesterday, and in this video I have 5 quick tips to get you started in your quest to defeat the corruption. My name is Skitza, and I make videos on strategy, indie, and early access titles that I find interesting. Before we jump into the tips, if you find this video useful or you like my videos in general, make sure you hit that little red subscribe button down at the bottom. It's a great way to support my channel, and it's absolutely free. Anyways, let's jump right into the tips. Alright, tip number one, explore the entire map. You might be tempted to head straight to level 2 or 3 if you stumble upon the stairs early. However, once you go up those stairs, you won't be able to go back and clear out the rest of the map. You want to collect as many buffs as possible before you get to the end of the dungeon, so hitting every single room is important, because these rooms contain those buffs, but they also contain gold, health globes, quests, quest items, more story, lore, all kinds of good stuff. So hit every single room before you move on. Alright, tip number two is break every single vase. It might seem weird to call this out specifically, as it kind of goes along the lines of tip number one of exploring the entire map, but I just want to point out, those stupid little vases, uh, you know, spread out through the entire map, have a chance of dropping gold and health globes. Sure, the health globes will help you get through the rest of the dungeon, but the idea is you want to pick up every single bit of morph or the in-game currency, I call it gold, as you can because the main way to gain progression on your characters besides leveling is upgrades in Ben's Workshop and the Book of Ray, and both of these require tons and tons of gold. Every time you get an upgrade, it costs more and more gold, so you really, really, really want to be diligent about breaking every single vase and piling on that gold. Obviously, you'll get more gold from slaying all the monsters and all that fun stuff, but every little bit helps. Alright, tip number three is hold on to three gemstones to guarantee buffs from the merchant. So this will probably require a little more uh, explanation than the other tips. It's more of a gameplay style decision rather than a, hey, you really need to do this. Uh, the idea is you spend more gemstones to guarantee that you get buffs by the end of the run to help with fighting the, uh, the boss of that area. The gemstone chests will take one gemstone to open, but it's not guaranteed you, you get a buff. There's a chance you get buffs, gold, health globes, whatever. So you can spend three gemstones and not get a single buff. So the idea is collect three gemstones to make sure when you get to the merchant, when you're when you're going to the next level, you can choose one of the, the buffs that he has for three gemstones to guarantee that you at least get something. Tip number four is you can respec your skills. This is more of an FYI than a tip. I know whenever I play a game and there's skills to choose from, I almost stop and panic and I need to go research the skills and oh, uh, is this permanent? Will I have a chance to respec? Uh, you know, are my decisions final? I just want to throw out there, there is a respec mechanic in the game which has something to do with this stupid little bird. I'm not going to spoil what you do, but when you stumble upon a room with this guy, this is your key to gaining these little eggs that will let you respec your skills. All right, tip number five. Uh, this one's kind of cheesy. Some people might not like it. It's whatever. Basically, the room barriers will prevent enemies from crossing. So it turns into kind of like a safe place. So if you're low on health or you need to wait for cooldowns to come up, you can cross over, enemies can't get to you, you're safe there. You can make this really cheesy and abuse the system if you're playing a ranged character. You can just basically kill everything on the other side of the barrier. I don't really recommend it, it's kind of cheesy, kind of defeats the whole purpose of the game, but you know, it's there if you want to use it. Alright, so those are my five quick tips for playing Children of Morta. Kind of the things that I wish I knew when I first started playing, you know, hour one. So I hope you find this video helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.